the bit of camaraderie there. So we'll see whether or not Mouseports can circumvent their issues. Ooh, Xbox smoke here, look at the timing. Now the push comes in lower dark. Well, Nico, Nico should read this though, that that smoke is there to cover that position. And he goes inside the smoke. Ooh, they, that is smart. They see, I guess maybe they just straight up saw him on the radio, radar or something. Possibly, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Gets tagged there. Well, the mid to B split seems to be the uh, way this is going. The bomb coming in with four men from the CT spawn direction with just the one coming in late from the uh, halls. There we go, three kills for the French. Nico to start answering back for the uh, German, Dutch, Bosnian side. Well, RPK with uh, quite a sneaky angle there, but Nico will be ready for it. Smith next up, but he will answer back, leaving Spidey alone. He has a kit. He is against three players. Can he find the headshots? As the French might say, probably wouldn't say that. Bodies take him down, so the pistol round successfully goes the way of G2. Does indeed. Interestingly, yes. We watched Liquid play uh, Dust Two. This Dust Two yesterday versus Luminosity, and we saw we saw some some bottle flames then, some attempts, some poor attempts at them. Kusta tried to uh, use the bottle of Molotov for a retake then, but he he threw it completely incorrectly, and then they were subject to a two-man spray down from double stack then. So perhaps practice is in order. Who knows if we'll see it in this round? Good start for Body in this anti-eco. Deeg though. Deeg is in. Deeg is out. Deeg in, dig out. And that's going to be the round. <laughs> that's basically the round. The bomb is going to be planted momentarily. There's still a player in T-spawn here. And Nico might be able to get something sneaky done. We shall see. I mean, there's always a possibility as well that he can do that. And maybe that as well. So two players dead to the Deagle of Nico. As you can see, Qua Nico is what he's named as Deagle, the Deagle Blaze. I guess the Deagle Blaze, I think the Deagle Blaze went up in value, James, when, uh, when Happy uh, aced TSM at the time. I wonder if it did, actually. It I think it did, because their entire team bought Deagle Blazes, right? And they're a team that had a lot of fans, so I'm sure a lot of people then wanted a Deagle Blaze after that. And Happy's Deagle Blaze is called Team Solar Rex as well, so... I don't know if people will pay that much attention to the actual skin of it, though. Well, I think, maybe, well maybe. James, says, says, says the guy that pays attention to a lot of skins, James. You are very skin, you're cognizant of skins. I am indeed. Well, now stickers, Dan. I've moved on to stickers. We've done. I'm over the skins. Got all the skins I need. Now it's time for stickers. Well, G2, they're, they're really cleaning up here in the, the anti-eco, which is good for them. Um, Especially after losing two players at the end of last round. Speedy trying to get some shenanigans done with the Scout. Quite connecting though, and that's going to be the round for G2. 3-0. And I am definitely a little bit worried for Mouse Sports, because after you know the start of those two maps, I, I, you know, I feel like those first two maps should be in the favor of Mouse Sports. G2 had their struggles, but you know, going into that second map and coming out of it, they looked stronger than Mouse Sports. And now, you know, Mouse Sports definitely probably a little bit frustrated. Oh, oh no. definitely that's frustrating as well. But actually, <laughs> Why did you run right next to the box? actually, nobody's there to spot that from G2. Because there's no op, so it doesn't even matter, James. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter, Dan. It does not even matter. So we see Mouse Sports with two plays over towards long, and it seems Chris J. Is he? Okay, yeah, he's on short. I wasn't sure if he was on short or if he was in lower. But again, it's a fast bleed fit, bleed flip. G2 uh, playing the fast game once again. Had to pick in the previous map. Will they have success here as well? It seems they will do. Three plays and it's an auto save here. From our sports, what can you do in this situation? They've barely, well, they've done some damage, but no kills against the G2 side. And again, the economy is with the uh, French speaking team. So. G2 will continue with their success. Mouse Sports will rue the play. So maybe this is the answer for G2 versus Mouse Sports. Just fast plays. I mean, it's, it's uh, definitely a potential. There is going to be adjustment, I think, when orbs are going to be found into the hands of both G2 and Mouse Sports. You, you know, you'd be surprised not to see an orb on both teams. Chris Shea, when he's got that orb, is going to be quite deadly. And uh, Smith, this is perhaps Smith's best map when it comes to warping. I think some, some would say. Some may say. Back in the day it was, Dan. But uh, he is a shadow of his former self on Dust2. 
Remember the days in our second last studio, the little room, Dan, we would have French Rambo, we'd get the bullets out, the bandana. Haven't seen those for a while, Dan. I don't even know where those are. I think you burned them. Yeah. I think they are melted. I burn them like a red woman burns bodies, Dan, to, to give tribute and have good things happen, Dan, but they never have. Well, now sports shutting things down as G2 try to storm their way into the site, but Body is really picking up here for G2. He's yeah. got a lot of headshots today, and he continues opening up the site. <laughs> He's going crazy with his entries. That's kind of nuts, actually. That There's like no respect play from G2, just going nuts into the B-bomb site. I wonder if B will end up being a, a consistent opening for them. We'll have to see how Body's perform uh, fluctuates throughout this map. But so far, so good for Mr. Body. And they will shut down the first, uh, first buys here for Mouse Sports. And that's going to leave Mouse Sports uh, to a save. And G2 aren't too interested right now in going for the, the push on those, uh, to kill those guns. Or to kill those players who are wielding the guns. You cannot kill guns. They are inanimate. And not sentient. Just to be clear. So a very fast 5-0 for G2. Are we going to see a tactical pause from Mouse Sports? I also do wonder if G2 are just going to keep rushing the B-bomb site until it fails, because I would love to see that. Yeah, it's quite possible. Look at their money. It's unreal. Dan, round six. Scream has basically 16k. Yep. Dropping the AWP, though, maybe expecting it to come out to Mouse Sports. So maybe G2 will slow things down here. They'll probably have to with the Orphans, though. Well, we see the smoke for the corner for long. That's one of my favorite smokes on Dust 2. Yes, there is corner smoke. And uh, Scream is up close with that M4. Looking for the player, and he's going to find the first snap onto Nico. Doesn't get the, first, the second kill by Pit. Will there be a trade or a refrag of some sort? Smith is going to have an angle, but this is kind of being reset right now. Oh, the snap onto the Spitty. He has been, his face was decimated, James. His face is no longer a face. It's just a, something with a hole in it. Just a hole. Will they slow down because there are orbs? No, is the answer. They will just continue the reckoning. But they only have two players to the one of Dennis, so he will definitely go for this one. Molotov's flying in his direction. There's another one onto Body as well, but Body is over towards Long, and Smith the Orpa is going to make his way there, but needs to before this smoke disappears. The angles will work out in his favor. The bomb is planted for double stack, which means the T's need to be on platform to defend it properly. Smith, though, is going to uh, have a bit of poor positioning there. And now this is a bit dangerous. Oh dear, he could go for the hero defuse here. But he's tagging him, but he's not going to get the frag in time. And Mouse Sports take the round. That is curious where, positioning from Smith. That is where first bullet inaccuracy can really screw you. It's spots like that. You're like, oh god, the headshot didn't land. Oh god, I better shoot him in the body. Oh my god, why is he so healthy? He's not dying. That's I lost the round. Unfortunate for G2. Although they are going to answer with aggression here. Double orbs coming out for the team. And I do wonder where things would have gone had they won that round. I think yep. if Smith makes it to long, then uh, that round is almost definitely there yeah. most of the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the interesting thing here is that obviously there's a few things going on. There's the opportunity for GT Root to reset the economy of mouse sports should they win this round. But also there is the opportunity to work these double orbs. And double orbs on T side is not really viable on the majority of maps, but on Dust2 it is. It's very, very viable on Dust2 because everything is so open. And uh, so you can really abuse the, the AWP. Now, Shox is looking to get the entry into B, where Body has been doing so successfully with the AK. A little bit slower this time, smoked off. Oh, the spray is good from Dennis, catching RPK off guard. Shoxy will remain though, probably wait out the smoke, so this is likely to be a slow round. Or is it? Are we going to just see a, a quick push through mid now? Let's see what Scream can accomplish here. Looking for the, uh, the shots as uh, Nyx goes out with a flash, but it's not going to work. Smith de uh, gets the uh, defensive kill there, keeping Scream in good health for now. As uh, Mouse Sports start to wonder, where are these guys going? And they are going to be going to be. Oh, Dennis popping out from the red box there. Dinking Shoxy, following up with a shot to the chest. Got two more to find here. Smith coming onto the box, but doesn't get the frag. And now Scream's going to go down. Smith will finally trade, but the damage has been done to the T's. Three TT's close. There are no nades for the retake here for Mouse Sports. 
and the Molotov will slow things down for them. Although I'm not sure if it actually went off. Other way. The uh, plant attempt comes in from Smith and two man spray down there. Are five seconds left. Body needs to find the last player here. He fakes thinking he's going to go through the window and there he is. He finds a frag anyway. Onto Chris J. Straight in the face. Nice play. Not much time left on the clock there. Body with uh, great decision making to make things work for his team. He's going massive right now. He's going so huge. He's, he's got me. Jesus. He's got 10 kills now. 10 for. He hasn't died yet, James. He has been. He's a, a sole survivor. He's yet to die. Yeah, but he's got the best spawn for B, and if they try to bum rush B, surely there's a good chance of him being traded one way or another. That said, never mind, mouse bots are on the eco, Dan. Dennis has a deagle. Other than that, they have little to offer. I do love that Molotov because it forces Dennis. He has no choice but to jump because he has to get over the ledge. Then he's exposed, guaranteed. Then he goes down. Okay, <laughs> we're seeing a pretty ridiculous uh, T side from G2. It hasn't felt like Mouse Wars have been able to do anything. This is the G2 show right now. This is the G2 show. Oh, no. Ah, no. Oh, he, I like, I, that's, that's always so funny, isn't it? Where you, it's like you check, but you don't really check. It's like you kind of look, but you, because you're too afraid to. Yeah. And, and then if you see them, because you've already committed yourself to, to checking the other corner, you're going to die anyway. So it's, it's quite funny, actually, that it works in that way. Um, either way. Um, one to seven, GT will successfully reset the economy of mouse sports. Body has been putting in some work. Let's see what else G2 can accomplish because it really feels like this series was not in G2's hands. It's very up for grabs until this point in which G2 now are dominating. The dominance has begun. But for how long will the dominance continue? Will it be luminosity style and never end, never be ceaseless? here from the CT. Chris J with the USB. Chris J with two USP kills and he's still alive. Maybe uh, one of his teammates was running this distraction. Two guns down now for the T side. RPK has control of the B bomb site for the time being. Going to try and help things by getting the smoke down. That is a big nade though. Off the back wall there. 50 HP gone. Molotovs to stop these T's, uh, CTs coming in and they can't do anything about it. They don't have any Kevlar. So they're finding angles towards RPK. But surely, unless Mouseports get really lucky, they should just save these AKs. Yeah, indeed, they'd have to get quite lucky. I think Body still has not died. I believe. Yes. I, I would love to see a half. I don't think I have JKS seen... JKS. For uh, Vox or Renegades. What, at that Gfinity like a year ago? No, it was in one of our games. He didn't die. I think it was on cash. Yeah, it was on, it was on cash. And he didn't die for an entire half. On the CT mm. side. Does, but this is T side dust too, James. Against Mouse Force. Yeah, that's true. I feel like it's... At least in Europe, we haven't seen anybody just last an entire half without yeah. dying. Although there's still a long way to go in that respect. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Interestingly, he can die. He can, he can be blown up to, by the bomb. And it wouldn't count as a death. So what is, what is your rating if you're 12 for 0? 12. It's just 12. Yeah. So you've got a rating of 12. His rating is, his 12, rating is 12 right now. <laughs> his rating is currently 12. Amazing. All right. <laughs> oh, well, well, his KD ratio is 12. I don't know what his, what his rating would be. Yeah. It might be calculated differently. So maybe maybe HLTV just makes the numbers up. I don't think anybody knows what the HLTV uh, rating is. I think any Peter knows, I think. Mm. Uh, Peter, Peter. Anyway, Mouseports are looking to. Make sure their body will finally die. He's in the smoke here. He's, he's, he's dead. He's dead. He's, the dream is dead. The dream is well and truly, completely, fully, utterly, and totally and ultimately dead. Absolutely dead. So Smith against three now to save the round for G2. Will he be able to do so? Got the smoke for the cross. A bit of a gap. Gap is not abused. Oh. Okay. It's, it's, it's done. It's done. Let's close the book on that. I feel bad now. I feel bad for the body. But his rating is still quite good. <laughs> it's quite funny how one of the players just disappears in front of our eyes and all the team just look like, what? Where, where did he go? <laughs> that was uh, quite amusing. So hopefully, hopefully wherever those guys have gone, they will be back soon. Maybe it's a toilet breakdown. Who knows? Do you remember the days where when you were in a warm up of a matchmaking game, you would spawn, there's like a, a, like a locker room or something, some kind of roller shutter. 
you know the box outside long doors from on the T side, just around the corner from T spawn, where you throw nades into the corner. Um, sometimes you would spawn in inside the locker there, just stuck stuck in in the shutter there. But apparently there are some kind of steam issue happening, which is why those two chaps have disappeared. So I think we may have to just go to a break because uh, this may take this may take a while to fix. So uh, I mean we're at the mercy of Gaben, I suppose, in this regard. So indeed, yeah, we'll go to a break and hopefully uh, the, whatever issue Steam is having will be fixed soon and we can resume. See you soon, hopefully. Whatever problems there were have now been fixed by people on the internet. Thank you, people on the internet. G2 still with a six round lead, and of course they will have to buy as much money has been made by the T side. All point to Smiths, all point to Chris J. No frags for either yet. Chris J could get caught on the slope, but he will make it around the corner before G2 choose to advance. They have at least cleared out the short area, and they will expect Chris J to be towards the car. They will put a smoke down there to suggest a cat drop. But there's no rotation coming in. And uh, Nico again is still in position for the mid to B push. You can see him looking for the cat drop and now he will realize what is up. Nobody checking for Nico's position. He will get second frag with next facing from B as well. RPK kind of stuck in no man's land and this push is falling apart here for G2. Yeah, absolutely. It's really smart of Nico there just to stay hidden. But actually, what we saw in uh, North America from Liquid uh, last night or this morning is that you can actually just wallbang that. You can just straight up wallbang it. I don't know how Hiko did it, but he did. He wallbanged the crap out of the player who was standing in that yeah, position. Yeah, he, was, he um, was over to the right-hand side if you were to CT facing. So it was kind of through the corner. But I feel like you could probably AWP it. But I need to test it. Either way, I think we need to see more hard counters from uh, people. I mean, with the smoke there, it doesn't, doesn't hurt to just, you know, bounce a, like a H or a Molotov over the top of it, over the, off the ceiling. 
Indeed. Push is looking like it's going to come in though for long, so that position will be a non-factor. But Nico says hello and goodbye. And now it's a five versus three. Long is in the control of G2 now, so they have something to work with. But oh dear, they think that was the plan, James. No, I think the plan was was thwarted. That was an unforced error, Dan. That's what it was. It was an unforced error. It's human error. Will it cost him though? Probably not in this situation. All five Mouse Sports players are alive. We've got three smokes on these, uh, two smokes on these tees, and they're both in long. So G2's run seems to have come to an end. You can see Smith with $1,300 in the bank here. They're going to lose this round, and then they're going to have little money left, Dan. Yes, I agree. It is going to be rather, rather hard if they do lose it, but there is a chance. They're actually on the bomb site now. Body, if he just goes ham like he's been going ham, he's not going to go ham. There is no ham. Smith is trying to get some sneaky shots here in the end, but it's going to be the jump from Nico to claim his third kill, and that will be the round there. G2 really could have used the bomb plant. In fact, they can even still buy, actually. Shocks could actually get op armor, and they could actually force it up here. And that actually is probably a smart thing to do, uh, considering that uh, if they're able to force a win on this round, or even get another bomb down, they're going to be in a great position in the next round um, against Mouse Sports, and they'll be closer to breaking their economy. But G2 in. Actually, there's not that many rounds left, so never mind. G2 in here. Quick save to get the next round by, and just leaping forth into Mouse Sports' embrace. And that's not a good idea. But what is going to be a good idea with a round like this? Looks like Mouse Sports will survive with every player intact. And now G2 looking to get the 10-5. Uh, off of this full buy and it will feature an AWP on shocks. I am so convinced. Do it. Do it. Yes. Oh, he dropped it to Smith. I guess that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, Dan. You definitely it makes sense. don't want Smith rifling over shocks, show, considering how important shocks was on the previous. I mean, seriously, saw some uh, 180 shots from him at close range. Shocks, you need him on the uh, AKs. He's a, he's a pretty god-tier roper as well. <laughs> That's the crazy thing with Shox, isn't it? It's like, Shox is amazing at everything. Hmm. Almost ever think that. Absolutely. There is definitely an argument that he's the most individually skilled player in France, which is quite a feat. Um, so, we shall see the uh, push coming in towards uh, middle, and it's going to be shut down there. The quick kill from Nico taking down RPK. And uh, once again, G2 finding themselves at a three versus five disadvantage with nothing to really speak of. They're going to have to just force this angle against Chris J with no smokes, no flashes, nothing to stop Chris J from hitting these shots except for an unforced error. And we will see so far that Chris J won't connect the first one, but Nico's in there causing more trouble. And the bomb is going to um, be falling to CT spawn. Rest in peace. That is why you do not run close to the ridge when you have the bomb, because the bomb can often fall into CT, CT spawn. I was moaning at somebody else doing that in uh, North American Counter-Strike recently. I'm not going to guess who it was because that might be rude. Anyway, six to eight. We move into the last round of the first half and Mouse Sports looks to close the gap to one after a uh, massive start from G2. A number of issues. I really think we need more hard counters to the, uh, the mid to B boost. It's such a simple counter as well just just one molotov yeah one molotov is all that's required i'm no surprised wall banks. yeah never yeah never mind the wall banks. just a molotov 400 dollars on the t side 400 dollars dan yeah it's cheap it is cheap it's bugging cheap as chips oh chris j not getting the kill there g2 looking for that 96 and this is a good way to start things off but the trades are coming back now the defense on the side has, has not being disrupted entirely, still mm -hmm. Dennis alive, but the nade is good, the follow up is good, and now it's a 2 versus 2, the bomb can go down and the guns can be picked up, but he can find himself on an AK now. And he has been wielding that with quite some success so far in this, in this uh, map. Now we will see Nico from the front and Spitty from the back. From the back. Well, down goes Speedy. Nico alone now, and he is going to make it look extremely easy as Nico always does. Seven to eight, the gap is closed to the minimum. 
Yeah, it's. Uh, you can even finish your sentence there. You're like going to set it up. So Nico's in this. Uh, Nico's kill everyone. <laughs> it's like, okay. And Nico, it's, can he? Oh, he has. Well, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Kind of, kind of how it goes. Uh, fair enough then. All right. So it actually ended up being a respectable side here for mouse balls, actually. I mean, look, okay, look at these rounds. Um, five rounds, no response. One defuse, reset immediately. 8 1 was the score. They picked up six rounds in a row. That is pretty beast from Mouse Sports. Six rounds in a row after the dominance from G2. It's going to give Mouse Sports, an Mouse Sports an opportunity to win this one now. There is a real chance for Mouse Sports, but uh, it all starts with the pistol. And uh, actually, it's worth noting that G2 won the pistol round in the first half. So Mouse Sports would do well to do exactly the same thing back to G2 and try to crush them on their pistol. Crush. But Nico's doing the, his usual things and oh my god, that is disgusting. That is why Nico buys the Deagle, I guess. I don't know, it's just, it's only Nico that really can make it actually work buying a Deagle on the pistol round, to be honest, that I've seen. It's very risky to do it, to be honest. You have to hit those one Deagles. Stop playing with fire. Three plays left for the G2 team. And Nico is still holding the angle on the headshot. Although he's got the he's got the 1.6 tick down where he just keeps bringing out the gun for no reason because especially now you don't want to be doing that. More headshots coming in. Meat shots. Oh, this is just too much pressure. 3k with the deagle in the pistol round. And a lot of damage on top of that. He probably did over a 300 damage there. Um, but obviously he did. Got but headshots for the deagle chase. All, all, you can do, all you can do is respect that's, uh, it. Respect it. But yeah, that's 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 really huge right there from from Nico. Like, let's say let's say let's put it at three and a half kills with the eagle. Yeah, I will take that. Three and a half kills. Three so, and a half meaty kills. Eight two eight. You could say he turned G two Dan into Pate. I you, I suppose you should you could. I haven't had Pate in a long time. Pate can be can be nice. Um, Pate is nice. On a, on well, I wouldn't say on occasion. I'd say very often. More often than not, Dan. Bit of duck pate and a picnic on the uh, you know mountains of France. Standard affair, Dan, on my trips to France. Standard affair. I would like some pate. So we have the long anti force by setup by Mouse Sports. It is the classic, it is expected, and we'll see whether or not G2 will be able to do any damage here. This should be a this should be not necessarily a clean round for Mouse Sports. They will probably take some losses here, but they should be able to win from this position. So just move up onto the bomb site. The, the plant should also be somewhat guaranteed if they if they use their grenades correctly. We have two smokes there just to make sure. Hopefully they'll get a flash in there as well. Actually, there's no flash there for the T side. So G2 could get something done. If only G2 had a flash, but the jumping scout comes into play. Shoxy's at the shenanigans here. Oh, he missed that second jump shot. He's getting tagged himself there. No frags going the way of Shox. Dennis taking down two players. The UMP coming into effect as well. Spitty with one kill and two RPK there. And now it is two players left for G2. They decide to abandon ship. <laughs> I like how he's pulling out the scout. He's ready, James. But screams there. One D from range. It's like, no, it's mine. It's mine. Uh, so G2 players will do the damage they can do and back away with uh, three people surviving for the mouse sports side who are going to take the lead now. No more deagles for scream. Nico on the hunt with the AK. Confident man who delivers time and time again, Dan. Time and time again. Absolutely. He's got more than double the kills of anybody else on his team. Do you know why that is, James? Why is it, Dan? Because he's really good at Counter-Strike. He is a beast. He can join Team Beast, The Dan. Bosnian Beast. I should make Team Beast. We can have Nico Beast, JZF Beast. That's about it. No one else? That'll do. Get, get right Beast, I guess. What about me, James? You're Danimal, Dan. The Danimal, I need team, Danimal, Dan. team Animal and Team Beast. All right. Animal counts as a, a beast or can. Anyway, it's uh, the 9 to 8, of course. Mouse Sports could actually be able to uh, take some advantages here towards G2. This is a great map for them to actually have great T-sides on. And, uh, you know, Chris J can be a big factor there, opening up maps with his snipers, his Scout J. So we can, so we can see there. 
very passive play from G2 with their pistols. Obviously, they've only saved, uh, managed to save the armor onto body. But he has a scout. Perhaps, just perhaps. Ooh. The head has been spotted. Nico has found the head. But uh, Shokshi will find Nico's head. And the trade comes in. It's a nice little uh, distraction play there coming in for a trade. That's good. And body, he gets the tag. In fact, he gets the kill as well onto Spitty. This is looking bad now, Japes. Why do they keep trying to kill him then? Don't Why don't they just leave him be? Now, Nex is going for the 1v1 versus the jumping scout over towards, but he's finally given up the ghost. I think poor decision perhaps being made there by the mouseport side. Chris J to take body down, so revenge has been had. Another B bomb site is almost clear, but there's a snake in the grass, and that snake has screamed. So this coming into the fourth as well. That snake is being. James, can I just tell off. you, this is one of the worst anti ecos I've seen in a while. That was, uh, I think sometimes, I don't know, everyone's minds just melt. And everything James, goes. all you have to do is just go A again. Just go long. Just, just, you just do that again. Or just, just or you can, you can go for the B play, but just get in there straight away. I'll tell you what they shouldn't do, Dan. One versus one versus scout repeatedly. Yes. Yeah, that, that is basically the worst case scenario. And uh, well, it's uh, time to try to get the value in here. They force it up, and Nico will get two frags. So Nico is delivering here on the entries, and uh, G2 met with a violent reality, and that reality is that Nico is kicking their asses that long. And now it is time for the retake. Five versus two now, as Chris J picks up a frag as well. And Nico again with another kill. So just picking these CTs off, they didn't even get a chance to play this round. So at least there's that. I mean, they've, they've done the, they, they should have had this, this should have been the same movement of players as they should have had in the last round, but they've done it against the by James. It still works in this instance. Yeah, so G2 are going to be reset economically. Although, uh, I think they took maybe three weapons in the previous round. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, you're right, actually. You can see on the money. Yeah, so... Like three players with uh, over 2,000, so you're right. We'll see what that has... If that plays a part in the following round. I mean, it, it might still just be a, a bad enough situation where they have to eco anyway. Maybe they'll spend a bit on Kevlar. We shall see what yep. their decision is. Mouse Sports with all their teams surviving in this round. And uh, even though they messed up that eco, anti-eco, yeah. perhaps... Well, well I, again, I, was gonna, I would normally say perhaps it gives them an opportunity to kind of run away with this part of the match. But because three people took weapons in the last one, it's a bit com more complicated than yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those spots where the whole dilemma there is they have to look left and right. You can avoid that dilemma entirely by going long or B. That's the entire reason why you do that. They could have actually bought three more rifles the G2 side and had uh, a four rifle buy I think in this round but they've chosen to go with some pistols and some bits and bobs Dan some bits and some bobs love me some bobs but here are the bits jo body taking two players down with the spray that is big that's a big spray that's a massive spray James and now it's uh, four versus three and the flanks are coming this is bad <laughs> G2 might will probably win this round again with these positions, this is, these are good positions. These are the money positions, James. These are meaty positions. Yeah, so uh, the M4 is on the B bomb site. RPK could hold an off-angle top mid, so if anybody tries to come, come onto Xbox, you can just shoot him in the back. We can see Smith is going to die, but uh, Shock's coming in for the flank, and now Mouse Sports with two people left. Again, the M4 is in the B bomb site, so that is a bit of a tricky situation. It's on Scream as well. Scream's like, can be godlike in these positions. They've got, to, they've got to smoke. I don't know that they need, they need to duel one versus one. RPK's been spotted. RPK goes down. So, uh, you know, they've got smokes. They can put a smoke onto Xbox. They've got a smoke on the door. That should be enough. But no, it's not enough, Dan. They could have put a smoke onto the Xbox itself, which would have secured the uh, push. But they haven't done so. And Scream is alive, Dan, and he's picked up an AK. This is dangerous territory. Yeah, yeah, was, oh yeah, yeah, this is totally doable for Scream. Scream, Scream Dan, loves rounds like this. Chris J's not looking wrong. Chris J is dead. Yeah, he is very dead. And here goes Scream. He's so fast, he is so fast, so considered, and patient as well. No nades for him, he is waiting. You can see actually that he had the wide peak angle first before he switches to what he's holding, and then he's holding a shoulder angle instead. 
that's actually that's like that little nuance there from Scream is actually awesome. Um, but he didn't pull it off, but, th but it, it very realistically could have. In fact, it, it, like he actually got some shots off, could have been a headshot there, um, and that would be the round over. So, yeah, again, um, buy versus buy though, and we will see the uh, the your part on Chris J again. The Xbox smoke here. Ooh, Nico's dead, James. He is dead. That's not good, Dan. It's bad. It's not good for the mass sports side who are moving for a fast play just as G2 did. And uh, they're going to charge up with nobody checking the uh, mid to B boost, maybe having a read on something else here for G2. And that something else is dying all over the map. The B bomb site is clear now. There is minimal answer. As I say that, we have uh, two quick flags coming in. So we're down to a three versus two now, advantage with the CTs. Will we see Bard off Molotov down? I, I, I doubt it, James. Do not get your hopes up. I haven't translated my video, which has no words in it, into French, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have the, uh, the CTs waiting for the flank. And now the flank is right. So now the CTs can go, and in they go, and the frags are made, and the round is done. Well, that was simple. That was pretty easy. That was pretty good. So, G2, 11 to 10, or should I say 10 to 11. We will bring things back. We will see what... Uh, the T's have to spend. Not much. Next has, he could drop a bunch of deagles for the side, or I mean, they could, well, if they forced it, it would kind of suck. It seems they're gonna force it. So uh, they are going for it. I mean, they've got rounds to play with here. They managed to eke up three AKs, the UMP on the Spiddy and the Scout. I did think it was uh, a low chance of the force coming in, but indeed they've chosen to do it. Can we have a quick look at the scoreboard and see what the CT economy is looking like? That is why they've gone for the force. Look at the money or the lack of money on the CT side. If Mouseports can take this round over the line, then that might put them in a strong enough position to uh, take the match, unless they get anti goed again, or e code again, rather. They've gone for the gamble. Again, they can afford to do it with G2 six rounds away from the match itself. Pushing through long, they'll get the first frag onto RPK. No answer yet from the CTs. There is a wall of smoke in long. Smart play by Mouseports. Good reactive play. Bit of a charge from Nico on the short now. Going for the spray down. Not going to get it. And he will retreat back behind the smoke. Smith now getting heavily tagged. That Molotov might finish him off here. Is even aware of it. He's got two HP. He's got two HP. On the site now. But the charge continues here. We've got smokes all over the place. And Smith is surely going to go down. We've got smoke splashes and flames everywhere. Scream with three frags. I have no idea how. Two versus three now. The advantage with G2. This uh, this is crazy. This is madness. I have no idea what's going on. But I do know that Nico is alone. Smith is still alive. It's two HP. How is he still alive? He gets the final frag. I don't know what just happened. Scream gets a 3K from I don't know where. And we are at 11-11. The gamble did not pay off for Mousepot. I have no idea what just happened. Smokes, flashes, Molotovs. Everyone dead apart from Smith. Who should have been the first one to die. With only two HP. Well, we're going to see uh, Mouse Sports on the Eco now. Dennis going for Kevlar and Tech 9. Other than that, they have nothing to show apart from the P250s and a bomb, which they will like to plant, but seems unlikely at the moment. Yeah, going to be interesting to see whether or not uh, these pistols will get anything at all done. It's pretty unlikely. Oh, wow. Quick kill there by Nico. Headshot and then the finish, which is a little bit annoying for Scream. But uh, you don't really expect all that much more to mount from this one. And you see going to be building up that money, just uh, going through the motions here and giving themselves a real chance after the uh, previous round victory, a real chance to actually uh, to, to secure this one. And Choxy is just taking sacrifices here. Taking the bodies. And uh, there's the 4K from Shox. Round closed out by body. The 12-11 buy-in for Mouse Sports, but it's not going to be the best best uh, monetary situation in the world for them. If, if G2 are able to claim the momentum at this point, economically speaking, and win this round uh, with a few players surviving, Mouse Balls are suddenly in a huge amount of trouble because it's 13-11 and they kind of need to, to eco. So they don't give them any more chances than this one. This is a highly important round for Mouse Balls. And here goes Nico jumping through the doors. Can they get the entries they need? Because there is a contestation here from the CTs. Oh, it looks like it's not going to happen here for Mouse Balls. They are in trouble. I think I heard at least six flashbangs across various parts of the map, mostly on long. Three guys on long for G2, but can Mouseports exploit this? Because down, that's going to slow down the uh, advance of Mouseports. They have no advantage, so how do they choose where to go with a weakened team? 
their top fragger by far has been picked first. You can see him on, I think, was that 28 frags? Yeah, 28. 28 frags. Absolute madness. He's heading towards three times as many as his teammates who are getting taken down one by one in double peaks from the CT. How does he do it, James? He's just better than them. <laughs> He's just better than everyone. <laughs> That's fair enough. Fair enough. All right, well, the two versus five situation. Everyone's getting tagged, and finally, there is a kill as well. And the flank coming in from A long is going to cause issue or could cause issue. We'll have to see. Next needs to get something done. There is the first engagement. Cannot win. Dennis on 10 HP. He is, he is a dead man. He is a dead man, and he is now dead. So, so. Mouthsport's taking a tactical pause. They find themselves two rounds behind now. And their money, as you can see, is terrible. They've got about 3K on average per person. So uh, tough times ahead because G2 should be heading towards 14 to the 11 of the, uh, of the mouse sport side. So uh, this is getting very difficult indeed. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's looking really weird. Uh, GT is suddenly looking like they can really do this. And uh, it's been a really weird series from many perspectives. I think there's been struggles on, on both sides. Um, but, but the fact that, uh, that GT have put themselves in this position with the various clutches they've had at this stage of the half gives them massive chances now because mouse sports, um, they, they have to save. Like, like I said, the last round was super important because now they, they have to save, which essentially gives, because I mean, they could, I don't think they're going to force play James. If they force here and they fail, they lose. Yeah, I mean, they have a problem. Everyone has 3K dollars or, or below that. So they're probably just going to save. G2 have 13 rounds. That means they're on 14 rounds, which means that that one buy is it. That's, that is it. That's last chance saloon for them. So G2 are going to be super close to closing this one out. And uh, I, I do wonder, I'm not, I'm not sure how the rankings look right now. I have to check them. Oh, it's still early days in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, it's still early days in Europe. So this is, uh, early you know, days. there are, the, regardless of who loses, there is, there's a road to recovery at this point. So mm. I would not be too worried. But nobody wants to lose. You know, these best of threes are, are hard slogs. And uh, it's a lot of energy to put in, only to come in the wrong side of it. I'm told G2 are currently zero for three in uh, the ECS league at the moment. So that's certainly not good. And the road to recovery becomes quite long in that <laughs> yeah. respect and maybe out of your control, just like um, it was for Tottenham coming second in the Premier League. They had to win all their matches to maybe have a chance to win the Premier League, but they needed Leicester to slip up there. Therefore, it was out of their control and Leicester didn't slip up and therefore opportunities were taken away. They weren't lost down, they were taken away. Yep, and I, don't, I think Mouse Sports as well could really use a boost. These are both teams that could really use boosts in the league. No one's Luminosity tier just yet. Luminosity, for those of you, for, for those of you that are unaware, Luminosity have won all their best of threes, all of their best of threes. Dropping and one map. Dropping a single map. Which was to Cobblestone to TSM. Which, yeah, they dropped to Team Semphis, AKA TSM, and that's crazy. Okay, so here we go. The, uh, the quasi is going to be played out by Mouse Sports. The quasi by, the half by, not much of a buy. The frags are made, the spray from Scream. Two players claimed by the G2 side. Now weapons will be picked up and uh, the lack of Kevlar is going to start to pose problems. Body just unloading every bullet, but he switches to a P250, finds the first frag, and the teammates of his will be able to support him in time. But 11, so the 11 14 is real. Now this is where the comeback if there is to be one, needs to happen. Or G2 basically have already, have, I mean, anything can happen, sure. But the odds are very likely that if G2 win this, this, this particular round, that they win this, this map and series. How well can this team play under pressure, the mouse sports side? Because under pressure they are. And we saw they held it together against flip side for many, many rounds at the major. But do they still have that same temperament? We will find out. We've got two men walking down into the lower tunnel. But the aggression from G2 looking to shut this down. They've got almost a three-man peak there. Two plays, lots of mouse sports in the lower tunnel. They are being severely handicapped. Looking to rush in reaction, coming through long. And with the player deep into short, I wonder if the CTs will hear them pushing long. I know you can definitely hear... I mean, obviously, the floor is different on short to long. So I know that from long, you can hear short. But I don't know if it works the other way around as well. It does. I'm okay. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it does, yeah. Well, I'm pretty certain it does. 
I've called that in some matches, I'm, I'm certain. Unless I'm misremembering things, but here we go. The push up the slope. Oh my god, knocking them all down. Oh my god, Jace. As you said, here we go, Dan. There was one player left. Yeah, <laughs> here we Everyone's dead. It's happening a lot so far. 15 11 is now the score, and, and this is the situation we're talking about. Mouse Sports uh, can still get some AKs in there, but their chances to win this round is, is uh, severely worse. And you can see that Nico, someone should surely give Nico an AK. Someone should surely give Nico an AK. This would not be the first time we've seen a situation. Come on. Can we look at the scoreboard, please? Someone take a screenshot of this. Nico has more than double the kills of anyone on his team, and he is rolling with a UMP while his team rocks the AK-47. So far, so good. He has been dinked, though, to 18 HP. Man advantage, a slim man advantage for the Mouseport side. Nico finds himself in the pit, and he's picked up an AK now from the carcass of his teammate. Absolutely. He's missed there. Oh, my God, getting the double there. Just smashing them with that AWP. What are they going to do now? Spitty against three players. Smiths with the 4K. What a clean up there from the Orpa. The French Rambo is perhaps back. The, the cap shot is going to be missed as Spitty makes his way across the smoke. Well, Tob in here. Spitty's going to try to fake. He's going to push forward. Smart play on the angles. However, it's not going to pan out for him this time around. And the fire is annoying, but Spitty find one of these players who are creeping ever closer to his position. The bomb is now planted, and it will be the first challenge there. Body is going to be victorious, and as will G2 be as now it's going to be the first victory for G2 in the ECS. So congrats, G2. A bit of an upset, perhaps. Congrats. Yeah, absolutely. I would say so. I feel like G2 are probably one of the, the more bottom teams, I guess, of the, of the league, personally. One of the worst teams, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's hard to disagree at the moment, but uh, they have taken it in somewhat of a surprise upset, if you will, based on how G2 have been playing. But again, mouse sports can be somewhat inconsistent. I mean, we know what yeah. their potential is, but they don't always reach it. And ma maybe this is one of those times. I mean, th th don't mouse sports have a win against Virtus Pro, for example? I think they do. I think they 2 0 Virtus Pro, if I'm not mistaken. You could be right. And, and this is like a spot where the, I think the day previous to that, because this is like, I think, one of the first weeks we did of Europe, uh, the day before that, I think, uh, yeah, they played an IP and it was like the sickest, one of the sickest matches I've seen this year online. It was a really amazing game between Virtus Pro and NIP and then Virtus Pro, their level dropped off against uh, uh, Mouse Sports right. and Mouse Sports were playing really well. So that combination, um, I, th I think Virtus Pro are just, well, that, that's another story. We can talk about when we cast the Virtus Pro game. So there you go. The European segment, I suppose, has, been, uh, has come to a close now for today. We've got two matches, two best of threes, went all six maps. And uh, if you're interested in more Counter-Strike, we... We have, the, we have the goods. Yeah, we have another six hours coming for you. Two North American matches coming up in about 50 minutes. So uh, if you are on the graveyard shift in Europe or if you are in North America, then prepare for that. Two North American matches coming up a bit later on. So thanks for tuning in to Europe and we'll see you in just under an hour for North America.